Hey, yo, everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review. Do you know what today is? Today is Wednesday, the best day of the week. You know why? Because it's comic book day, and that means we're going to be talking about my comic load for this week. Now, this week is a pretty big week, probably the biggest week out of all of them, the fourth week of the month, um, and I have like 14 plus titles to talk about. Holy Randy Orton's, that is a lot. Um, how did, <laughs> how did I ever get that big? Probably because I have a really bad addiction to reading comics. Well, it's not a bad addiction. Actually, reading comics is a very good addiction. As long as you can handle it, which I can. So let's jump into my comic load and let's start things off with a little Batman in my life. And a little bit Batman in your life with Batman Inc. issue number two. If you remember... Last month, I did not really care for Batman Inc. It really didn't do anything for me. I thought there was some problems with the first issue. Um, whether or not issue two will continue that path or not, you'll just have to see. But it's kind of um, it, it kind of takes a step away from the first issue. It, it does its own thing, for ill or for good, in that it, it follows Talia Ghul throughout her life, uh, from her birth to her childhood to her early teens, to her adulthood, to interacting with Batman and her father and the birth of her son. And it takes a lot of scenes, continuity-wise, from Dennis O'Neill's run on Batman in the 70s with the, the Tales of the Demons, uh, with, you know, Batman and Son and Batman the Black Glove and Batman R.I.P. So it takes a lot of nods to continuity. But it kind of just shows the evolution of Talia Ghul and how her story... Kind of becomes Damien's story in that, you know, she really wants this father figure and a mother figure in her life. However, you know, she doesn't get it. She's treated coldly. And then what does she do? She turns around and does the same thing to her son. So it's kind of interesting. You kind of, you get this feel of why Talia is doing what she's doing. Good. Uh, I love the nods to continuity in here. One thing you can expect from Grant Morrison is he will not forget about the Silver, Bronze Age, even Golden Age continuity. Um, it was nice to see that stuff. Uh, from Batman jumping off the train and meeting Talia for the first time wearing that cheesy old woman disguise, to uh, his fight with Ray Chargul in the desert, the sword fight with the scorpion that got involved, to them making love and, uh, you know, having Damien. Um, all the way to the nods to more recent continuity, like when they're on the submarine talking with each other uh, before it goes boom, or the uh, man bat ninjas. So the nods to continuity was very nice. Uh, and the story was very fun and interesting to read, too. Uh, bad, there's only two particular bads, and I don't know if one of them you could consider bad. One is, uh, it does take a huge step away from the first issue, and this really probably should have been the first issue, with the other issue being issue two, because it just feels very disconnected in the overall arc, uh, overall feel of the arc, um, and to this one point where, like, Ray Shagul is telling her, and this isn't a big spoiler, he's telling her, like, you shouldn't go up against a detective, and then she has, like, his ninjas pull his guns on him, and he's like, oh, maybe you should, because you just surprised me. I don't see Raish doing that. Um, I don't really care for the art, but the art's not bad. And um, anyone else think that that giant guy walking around could possibly be Bane? Just just throwing it out there. However, how good did it do? Um, I was actually really impressed by this issue. It took a turn for the better. Uh, with last issue, I think I gave it like a 3 out of 5. This, I'm going to give a 5 out of 5. It was a very good issue, and I really enjoyed it. So, Batman Inc. came back from... Uh, it just shows you... Uh, Grant Morrison is kind of like Judd Winnick, where, uh, where Judd Winnick is good, boy, is he good. But when he's bad, he's bad. Same with uh, Grant Morrison. When Grant Morrison is good, boy, is he good. But when he's bad, he's bad. Uh, talking a little bit more Batman with Batman The Dark Knight, issue number 10. Uh, we got a new writer on here, Greg Hertzwitz. I hope I'm saying that right, uh, who did Penguin Pain and Prejudice, which was a fantastic story, so we're we're getting a good writer on this. Uh, still having David Finch as art, which is fine. David Finch does good art. And uh, the story circles around a bunch of kids getting abducted by a um, recurring Batman villain, one that has already been introduced in New 52, but kind of getting a makeover in this uh, this issue. Uh, the kids aren't physically getting hurt, but they're getting psychologically hurt with... Uh, with a, a certain gas. 
I think you all know which villain this is. Uh, but I still won't reveal it because I don't want to ruin it for anyone that, who knows, might not know where this is going. Um, and this individual, this villain, is happens to have his eyes set on someone in the Batman family. And at the end of the issue, captures someone in the Batman family. Uh, let's just talk about the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Uh, good. There's some really nice subtle moments in this, which are nice. Uh, two in particular stand out. Um, and one I'm going to have to be very vague because I don't want to spoil anything. One is where Batman's trying to talk to the little girl that's been traumatized. And she's not saying anything. And he's, he's trying to get these answers from her. And finally he just sits down next to her, holds out his hand, and holds, uh, holds her hand. Uh, reminiscent to what Batman did in Batman uh, Justice League Unlimited when Ace was dying. Um, something like that. I mean, it's not quite as powerful as that episode, but it's still something subtle and nice that really is touching to Batman. The next thing is um, the individual when the, the, they start to hallucinate from the gas. So the things they see and how they interact with those things um, was uh, kind of chilling almost. Almost. Uh, the... Bad. Uh, the story, uh, hold on, uh, two more goods. The story is well placed in addition to that, I like what they're doing with this new villain. Or not new villain, but this villain in a new way. Uh, bad is, the only bad I think about is, he has a girlfriend in this, and you know, unless the girlfriend is Catwoman, Silver Saint Cloud, maybe Vicky Vale. <sighs> The girlfriends don't last with Batman. She's going to last for a story arc. I'm going to not care about her afterwards, and that's it. So I think girlfriends are unnecessary. On the whole, whether or not you should get it, uh, yeah, this was a definite improvement over the previous Dark Knight, and I'll give it a three out of five, uh, three point five out of five. It was fun. Uh, next for the Man of Steel, Superman issue number ten. So Superman's going up against this woman here. And uh, the reason why she's doing what she's doing is because she wants a locket with a picture of her mother in it. And she's going kind of crazy for it. Uh, Superman's trying to stop her, but in the meantime, he has to deal with the fact of his secret identity being revealed and it being the wrong person. Uh, a bunch of shenanigans and tomfoolery go on, and you basically kind of see where this uh, story's going to end. So, let's just get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Good. Like I said with the previous issue, we got Dan Jurgens on this issue, and we getting that feel of Superman from the 90s. It feels like Superman, the character-wise. Uh, it's not totally Superman yet, but it feels like Superman. Um, the the resolve of the story was good uh, and kind of funny and fun, especially with the, the confusing of secret identities. Uh, and the art is good. The bad, the story did nothing for me. It's, it's just there. It's like, why should I care about this chick? She's never going to show up again. If she does, no one's going to care. Uh, and the story was just kind of silly. Um, and saying that, it wasn't a horrible issue. I'll give it a 2.5 out of 5. It, it was okay. Um, so, yeah, Superman. Uh, Scott Lowdell's jumping on the title in issue 12. And I'm very interested to see what happens with that. Next, we're going to go with Flash issue number 10, Weather Wizard shows up. Um, we get to learn about Weather Wizard and that he's part of a mob family and that his brother was killed and he's trying to exact vengeance on his brother. And uh, Flash is trying to deal with Weather Wizard all at the same time, trying to get back to Patty and save Patty. Uh, which, you know, makes Flash come to a, 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 an interesting decision about his secret identity and about Patty and how he feels towards her and what he's going to do. Good. Uh, I like Weather Wizard. I look like the new look on him, and I like the new backstory on him. Uh, and I thought the story was resolved very interestingly from uh, Patty and Flash's perspective, and from Weather Wizard's perspective. Uh, the art was good. The uh, action was pretty good too. Bad. I don't know. It just felt like it felt a little. I don't know. With all the rogues that Flash is kind of going up against. In the recent months, you know, he goes from Captain Cold to Turbine to uh, Gorilla Grodd and now to Weather Wizard. I have to say Weather Wizards was probably the most, I don't know, I don't know what the word is, just unimpressive of the stories. Uh, I mean, I liked his backstory, especially the mob backstory, um, but Fla I guess, here's the thing. 
I finally think I got it. I like the separate stories of Flash and Weather Wizard, but combine them together, it just didn't feel right. Plus, Weather Wizard got beat up way too quickly and too easily. So, yeah, you know, on on a whole, I'll give this a 3 out of 5. Which is actually, I think, the lowest grade I've ever given Flash. Flash has been the, one of the best of the new 52, but uh, this issue was just okay. 3 out of 5. Gotta be honest with you guys, when things are good, then they're good. Uh, when they're not, they're not. Aquaman, uh, issue number 10, we're continuing Aquaman dealing with Black Manta and the revelation from the previous issue that Aquaman killed Black Manta's father. And that's why they're in this constant circle of vengeance and hatred towards each other. Um, this issue pretty much plays out what you think it would be. There's some exhibition in the beginning, um, but, you know, it's basically Aquaman versus Black Manta and Black Manta wanting to get the the Golden Atlantean Artifacts, eventually coming to head with uh, Manta finding his way to Mira. So, um, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, fast pace, good action, good fun. Um, it ends on a good note. Cliffhanger, making me want more. Uh, bad, there's not really that much bad, but I don't think this was the... I mean, this was an okay issue. I'll give it... I'll give it a 4 out of 5. It was an okay issue, but um, nothing really stand out too much. I think it was just punch, kick, pow, boom kind of thing. So I think next issue is going to be where the big stuff is going to go down. So yeah, 4 out of 5 for Aquaman. Uh, going to the Savage Hawkman, issue number 10. Last issue, Hawkman was caught by this guy, which was I think called Xerxes. I, I don't know. And uh, Hawkman is basically needs to fight in a gladiatorial battle. And this issue, that's basically what he does. The majority of the issue is gladiatorial battles. If you like action, you're going to get it here. Uh, there is a lot of fighting. And we get to see uh, Aquaman is a little bit more of the rough and tough kind of character from the new 52. Um, or at least from the, the Justice League. And that that's the basic thing. It, it's him in the gladiatorial battle and him getting out. Uh, good. Uh, the fighting was good. The art was good, and uh, the Xerxes guy, even though I don't care about his name, he seemed like an interesting character. I would have liked to see more from him. Uh, bad. It ended on a bad note. They like, try to leave it on a cliffhanger with some dude, and I don't give a shit about that dude, because I don't know anything about the dude. It's some dude that's all like... I'm gonna just call him a dude. It's some dude that's just Saint uh, Bastion and he just, he's wearing this cheesy ninja armor, and it's, I don't know if he's shown up before in comics, but I just don't care. No. It's kind of like when Warblade and, um, showed up in Teen Titans, and what's her name? Oh. She showed up in Deathstroke the Terminator. I forget. Uh, Zealot. It's like, these are Wildcat characters, and I should care, and I do want to care, because I think Wildcats should be a comic that shows up, but I just don't care right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5. No. 2.5 out of 5. It was okay. Nothing too, too special. Green Lanterns and New Guardians, issue number 10. Uh, so the Blue Lanterns are being attacked by the Reach, and it's really just the Blue Lanterns doing the best they can to prevent the Reach from killing them. Uh, and that's the, the, that's the story. Uh, eventually Kyle Rayner, Fatality, and, um, oh, the Yellow Lantern, I forget his name off the top of my head. But eventually they show up to help out, but, my god, the Blue Lanterns, the stuff they do to try to keep the Reach away. Uh, which I was just jumping to the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it, and it leaves off on a kind of a sad note. Uh, but good, uh, like I said, my god, the Blue Lanterns kick ass in this. Uh, especially when Kyle Rayner shows up and they get that, the, the ability boost from the Green Lantern ring. But, you, you think they're gonna be helpless, they're just gonna stand there and keep their shield up. No, they're doing everything they can to stop the Reach. Uh, you know, and I liked how the Blue Lanterns were pushed to the test. It has a sad ending for the Blue Lanterns, and I liked it, too. Um, it, it's similar to what the Red Lanterns are going on, uh, going through right now, but it was still a good ending. Uh, the Reach were an intimidating foe, but they're not too, too intimidating. I think the Reach could be beat if, like, the Green Lanterns or just anyone got their act together. Uh, but they were intimidating for this issue. Bad? 
none. Uh, this has to be pound for pound probably the best issue of Green uh, Lantern New Guardians thus far that I've read. I read them all. Um, I will give this 5 out of 5. This was really fun. This was really enjoyable. And it makes me want more. Um, next. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're all... We got like six, seven more titles. So I guess we're halfway there. Voodoo, issue number 10. A question. Why is this getting canceled? Why? What? Because of sales? This was a great series. Um, why are they canceling it? I don't know. So Priscilla and her team with Lincoln are on the way to get to Voodoo, who is on one of Jupiter's moons for the lost demonite city. And she wants to get into the demonite city, but there's a reason why she can't. She eventually gets captured by these demonites who are actually evolved to the point that they're cannibals and they look completely different from every other demonite. They're like brown skin and weird looking head. And there's something about these demonites that really made me uncomfortable. I guess it's the fact that they did become cannibals and that they evolved in a certain way from eating each other. It was actually kind of uncomfortable to think in concept wise, but um, yeah, Voodoo has to work with them in order to get what she wants, the ultimate weapon for Hellspot. Uh, good. The pacing of the story was good. I like the atmosphere. I like the location, and I like the dialogue that got, uh, went on. Um, the only thing I could say is the ending was kind of silly with the defenses against the uh, the weapon itself. But besides that, I'm gonna give this a four out of five. Voodoo is a consistently good series, and it's sad to see it go. But four out of five, pick it up. Now, this comic came out last week, technically, but there was a shortage at my comic store, so I didn't get it until this week. Uh, Blue Beetle issue number 10. I'll just talk about it now. Uh, Blue Beetle goes to the the oh, Department of uh, the DOA, I think it is. What is it called? Uh, they show him in Batwoman 2. It's just a name escapes me a little. Uh, yeah, D.E.O. Uh, the DEO, and the, he goes there to think... Oh, God, my contact is killing me. He goes there thinking that he can get help and maybe mentorship from the DEO, but instead uh, he gets captured, tortured, and basically, you know, put to the limit. And how is he going to get out? How is Blue Beetle going to get out? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you should read. Uh, it leaves off on a big cliffhanger with a introduction to a... Let's say, okay, I'll say, a big name to the DC Universe showing up in the comic at the end, which should make issue number 11 fun. I don't want to give anything away. I almost did. Um, good. Uh, the cliffhanger at the end, although not much was given to it, I do like the fact of it setting up for the next issue. Uh, I liked Jaime in this, and uh, I liked how we get the DEO as this... Um, government agency that's willing to do anything and everything to get stuff done uh bad it was just kind of a cliche story you know the getting captured and having the breakout but you no know, it was okay for that cliche-ness um on a whole i'll give this a 3.5 out of 5. it's an okay issue it's, I, I enjoyed it uh i vampire issue number 10. so andrew bennett uh basically has another one of his tussles with mary you know, because they always have tussles. She wants to take the vampires and fight against uh, bad things. and Not bad things, but eat and be our natural selves. And Andrew's like, let's not do it because we have to be nice. And the Van Helsings are after them. Uh, in the um, I Vampire DC Universe, the Van Helsing isn't one person, but a group of people that Van Helsing the story is just based off of. Uh, they go after them and it ends off on a really kind of funny note. Uh, not funny, but uh, quirky and interesting. Not quirky and interesting. How about just interesting? There's nothing really funny with a bunch of people dying, but how they come back is hilarious. Uh, which should make the next issue really fun. Um, good. The art was, again, great in this. A lot of people comment on how crappy the art is. I think for a horror-based comic with a grittiness, I think the art is perfect for this. The pacing of the story is great. The dialogue is fantastic. Especially between the Van Helsings and Andrew Bennett's little lackey, I forget his name, the doctor. Um, the, the dialogue is great. Uh, and it leaves off on a cliffhanger. Um, bad? None. Whether or not you should get it? Uh, yes, definitely. Five out of five. Pick it up. Really good issue. 
Uh, let's continue with Andrew Bennett, in a way, with Justice League Dark issue number 10, uh, featuring the House of Mystery. Now, if you're not an old-school comic book fan, or if you didn't read anything from the Silver Age, there was two houses, the House of Mystery and the House of Secrets, both of which get mentioned, and one of which gets shown up in here. And it's kind of fun to see, like, a quirky concept make it into the New 52. Um, basically, they, go, uh, they beat up Felix Faust, they got Dr. Mist, and they're going to the House of Mystery to figure out what they're going to do with these Book of Knowledges, or the Book of Magics. Uh, while this is going on, Felix Faust is having this little talk with Stephen Trevor, and them going and having that back and forth, and everyone's starting to realize that maybe Constantine's not a good person to trust, because he's a little out of his mind. Um, good. I really like the introduction of the House of Mystery and House of uh, Secrets concepts and what goes on with them. I thought the dialogue was really fun and good. The cliffhanger was nice. I liked how Stephen Trevor's in both this and Justice League and the, the, the connection between the two books are good. Um, and the setup for what the story arc is going to be great. Uh, the, the story arc that we're doing right now, the setup for the end of it is going to be great. Uh, bad. Again, this is another comic that has no bad. Five out of five. Really impressed me this week. Okay, okay. We are getting to the last three. Let's talk a little about T-E-E-N-T-I-T-A-N-S. Teen Titans. Uh, so we're on the Mystery Island, and the Titans are kind of just talking. The majority issue of them talking. Uh, there's no real big action scenes or dilemmas or anything, but we get to see interactions with the Titans, which is something that we really need to see because the Titans have always been on the go, on the go, on the go, on the go. We haven't had an issue for them to just stop, relax, and converse with each other. We got some interesting interactions between, like, Kid Flash and Solist, or Bunker and uh, Red Robin, or... Uh, or uh, Sam Mark and Red Robin or Superboy and the team is it, some interesting interactions and um, really kind of a, a, a how should I say a rest and relax issue. Um, good. Like I said, the interactions were nice. I liked how we got a chance for them to actually talk with each other and work as a team. Uh, I like this incarnation of the team. Um, you know, Superboy. Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, Red Robin, Bunker, and Solus. I think that should be the team. I just don't like Skitter because her look, like the big bug thing, doesn't fit with the team. So I think this is going to be the official team, which, if that's the case, I'm cool with. Uh, so I, I do like the interactions and I like how the team is playing out. And all the characters are kind of getting face time, which is nice also. The pacing of the story was well done, and it stops on, you know, ends on a pretty good note, too. Sad note, but an interestingly good note. Bad? There's no real bad with this, either. Um, I'm not going to give this a 5 out of 5, because it didn't blow me away like some of the other issues. Uh, but this gets a 4.5 out of 5. It was still pretty damn fun. Uh, Teen Titans is starting to, you know, after... I think once we got that silliness with the culling over... I guess not silliness, but once we got the culling over... Uh, we can finally jump into the stuff we want to see. <sighs> Time for the last two. Justice League issue number 10. Dealing with um, this new villain with the villain's journey. Uh, let me just... Um, I had his name in my head and I completely forgot it. Uh, let me just relook it up. Basically, this is following the, the villain's journey with the Justice League dealing with this new guy. Oh, Graves. That's his name. Yes. Uh, dealing with this new guy, and uh, basically, he is who you think he is. I'm not going to reveal it if you don't know who he might be, but um, he shows up and he blames Justice League for everything bad that's happened in his life. While this is going on, the Justice League uh, is kind of having a little sit-down talk with each other and interacting with each other. Uh, how much they know about each other and how much they don't know about each other. Some funny moments are when, you know... Everyone's like, Batman doesn't trust anyone, and Batman's like, I trust Superman. Like, what? And he's like, and, and Cyborg's like, yeah, Superman's a writer. And they're like, how do you know this? He's like, I'm Cyborg, I know everything. And Batman's like, yep, he's a writer. And he's like, how do you know this? And he's, Batman says, oh, it's because Superman and I work with each other on, you know, outside the Justice League, and we don't steal each other's girlfriends, Green Lantern. Um... So, you know, there's some funniness back and forth, but we get to see what the Justice League stands on, you know, 
how much they know about you, uh, each other and how much they don't. And then there's a, a big fight scene at the end. A uh, good is I'm liking this Graves character, the enemy. Uh, has a good look to him, and I feel as though he'll be a good Justice League villain in the long run. Maybe not for the story arc, you never know. But I think in the long run, he'll play out very well. I like the interactions with the Justice League. The art was fantastic. Uh, and the backup with Billy Batson and Shazam was awesome. Especially where we get to see uh, a big-name character to the the Shazam comics the Captain Marvel comic show up, and I was like, oh my god, thank god he's here. Oh my god, I love him so much. I was ecstatic. Bad, the only bad I can think about is, you know, the backup is fantastic, the main story is great, but I think they take away from each other a bit because uh, once things start to get rolling with the main story, then we get the backup. And once things start to get rolling with the backup, we don't get enough time because we had to make time for the main story. Um, Shazam should be its own comic. But, uh, besides that, I'll give it a 4.5 out of 5. Uh, Justice League was really good this week, and I really did enjoy it. Uh, the pacing starting to pick up. Next is, and last but not least, is Night Owl issue 1 of 4 for Before Watchmen. Let's talk about this. Um, basically this shows how Dan becomes the Night Owl, how he was, like, sidekick a bit to the original Night Owl, how he gets, like, the name Night Owl and eventually joins up with Shorshack and how he interacts with all the other members of the Watchmen. Um, that's basically the story. Don't want to give too much away. Uh, good character analysis of Dan. Uh, a cute character analysis, for lack of a better term. Uh, the pacing of the story was well done. The art was, for the most part, good. Um, and I thought it was just overall a very well-handled comic. Bad? Nothing really. It was a good comic. It was interesting. It was good. I'll give it a 4 out of 5. So, I'm going to end the review there. There's there's not much more to talk about. Um, so, yeah. That's the comic load for this week. Pretty big week. I, I know that was kind of a short review for, um... Before Watchmen, but see the thing with Before Watchmen is I just don't want to give too much away um, about the comics. I don't want to is the stories are very simplistic in their tones and in their concepts, but they offer more and it's more stuff that you're only going to pick up if you read it. So, uh, but yeah, that those are the the comic load of the week. Some stuff were good when I didn't expect it to be good, and some good stuff was not so good when I expected it not to be not so good. But yes, uh, interesting week and overall fun week too. So I'm going to end this video here. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.